The question which we want to discuss today is why do students have to study so many subjects from engineering and science once they enter an institute after the JE counseling process, despite the fact that the student has already been allocated a department. I'm sure this question has vexed many a student's mind. It has vexed me also for a long time. And this question was actually posed by a student uh, named Keshav Goel from Bitspilani. He's studying electronics there uh, through the Google form, which I had shared a few weeks ago. So thank you, Keshav, for sharing this very important question, for asking this very important question. Let's discuss this now. So uh, what are the issues at stake here? First of all, if the natural question is if the student has already been allocated a department, why study this broad base of things? The most common reason which is given in favor of such a system is that, uh, look, engineering by its very nature is a very interdependent uh, professional work which involves uh, knowledge from various fields. So even if a mechanical engineer is working in something at a professional level in an industry, he needs to have some basic understanding of electrical uh, technology, about electronics, uh, and certainly about uh, some amount of computing, besides a host of other things from physics and chemistry. So that's the most uh, common reason. But I personally think that this kind of a reasoning is a little bit flawed given the kind of intensity with which we teach these subjects in the first year. Look, I am myself a faculty member here in the Mechanics Engineering Department of IIT Kharagpur, and I have very much been involved in the teaching of first year mechanics. So, and when we teach first year mechanics, we certainly make it, uh, we, we certainly teach it in a way which involves uh, a very, very specialized knowledge in certain topics. Uh, the kind of knowledge, the kind of specialized knowledge which is perhaps not necessary for students who are not from the mechanical sciences. Uh, see, for students who are from mechanical, certainly from civil, aerospace uh, or aeronautics, uh, ocean engineering and naval architecture, to a certain extent mining and even metallurgy, the way that we teach mechanics in first year, agreed, it is absolutely foundational. But what use really is it? for a student from computer science, a student from chemistry, that is highly questionable. So you see, I have very, uh, I myself been very much part of the problem. Uh, similarly, uh, for a student who in, in mechanical engineering, uh, what use really is uh, of him studying an entire semester or perhaps an, a significant part of his semester studying hardcore uh, reaction mechanisms that is taught as part of the organic chemistry of first year chemistry. That is extremely, extremely specialized thing which these students will never ever learn. So you see the problem here. Uh, and this is a very, very, these, these are all very personal opinions from my side, okay. Uh, perhaps it would it not be better if uh, instead of this kind of a very specialized knowledge, we, we give the broad base of, uh, of this education from various departments in engineering and science to all the students irrespective of the department, but make it less specialized, uh, perhaps make it more practical oriented, uh, which will require a lot of investment of our time and thinking uh, on how to make it, uh, make that knowledge uh, relevant for professional practice. Uh, let us consider another aspect of it. Somebody may argue that, look, we have the system here, but it is not so much better elsewhere. Uh, for example, in the US, they also have to study uh, a number of subjects in the first year. But there is a very important and subtle difference. Actually, not so subtle. Uh, so see, when uh, the undergraduate students, they start their curriculum, uh, they have actually entered the university or the institute, but they have not actually entered the department there. So in their first year, and to a certain extent, even in their second year, they study subjects which are very general. So everyone is studying various kinds of subjects. And slowly, slowly, as they develop their maturity, their academic maturity, they develop their own interests. And very importantly, they realize their own strengths and weaknesses 
based on those realizations, based on that understanding and greater maturity, it is only then that they get into, they, they, that they choose their various majors. Now, they call it as majors, it's uh, actually just their department. So a student would be taking mechanical engineering only if he thinks that he can perform well in mechanical engineering. Because once he enters this, uh, enters the mechanical engineering system, that part, that part of the curriculum, he has to do very hardcore courses there. Similarly, it is in computer science or in any other of the other uh, majors. So what about another country? Let's take up the case of the United Kingdom. So two pillars of the higher education system of the United Kingdom are of course uh, Oxford University and Cambridge University. And uh, there, at least for maths and physics, when you enter the university, at that very point, you have to choose the specialization of maths and physics. There are specialized entrance examinations for maths and physics. I, I think it's the same for chemistry also. So a person, a student who is entering maths, for example, uh, when he enters that, he, uh, he or she has to specialize in maths from day zero. There are no two words about it. Okay, so right from day zero, he or she has started doing courses in the maths department, similarly in physics. It's not that he, he, he goes about studying a broad base of subjects. So this is for the sciences. What about engineering? Well, for uh, engineering at Oxford and Cambridge, they have a slightly different system. Their entire program is called the engineering sciences. So when a student enters uh, the university, uh, he or she is actually enrolled in general engineering science. So in the first year, and again, to a large extent, in the second year, officially, they are doing uh, very well-designed general courses, which are supposed to train them in, uh, in gaining a very wide base of knowledge uh, in things which every engineer is supposed to be good at. Uh, it is specialized where it needs to be specialized. It is kind of maybe less rigorous where it needs to be so. So it is actually designed keeping in mind the, the general requirements of a professional engineer. It is only after the second year that the students start the specializations into the different departments. So we can actually see the undergraduate course listing here at Oxford. Uh, the engineering, you can, it's clearly written here, the engineering science program is a four year course leading to the degree of master of engineering. The first two years are devoted to topics that will uh, that we believe all engineering undergraduate students should study. So this is the very important part. Okay, they have designed it in such a way. It is only in the third and fourth years that there is scope for specialization into one of the six branches of engineering that they have. Okay, so these are the various things that they can specialize in from their third year. And uh, please don't worry that this is Master of Engineering. They have a slightly different system of bachelors and masters over there. Uh, so this is kind of equivalent to our uh, BTEC courses. This is for uh, Oxford, this is for Cambridge. And here also, uh, you see it's clearly written that part one, the years one and two, provides a broad education in engineering fundamentals, enabling you to make a genuinely informed choice about the area in which to specialize from your third year. Okay, so this years three and four then provides in-depth training in your chosen professional discipline and these are the specializations available so aerospace and aerothermal engineering bioengineering civil structure environmental engineering uh, so a host of different things this was about oxford and cambridge uh, however the system is a little bit different at imperial so uh, imperial is arguably one of the top engineering programs uh, certainly in the uk uh, and uh, globally also. There, for example, if you have to study mechanical engineering, so right from the admission, you would be specializing in mechanical engineering. Uh, so starting from year one, you'd be studying courses uh, involving mechanics, then uh, stress analysis, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics. Let's take a look actually. So this is uh, mechanical engineering. In year one, you have these basic courses 
So the system is quite different from Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, and then in year two, you have uh, similar sounding uh, subjects, but there is a two here. So this is slightly more advanced. Uh, and then in year three, you have uh, very important projects which they have to do very, very seriously. And then you have a huge number of optionals from which they can um, uh, choose. Similarly, it is in year four also. You have projects, very important projects, and then you have uh, a number of very advanced options, uh, elective subjects to choose from. So the point that I'm trying to make is that uh, here in India, I think we have the basic kernel of the proper system. Okay, it's not all bad, certainly not. Okay, uh, but there is certainly scope for improvement. Perhaps we can uh, incorporate a little bit more flexibility in how the students can choose their specializations. I know uh, a big, big question mark is that what will happen to the department change system then? If you think about it, if we have such a flexibility right from the first year where students don't have to choose a department, the question of department change would not even arise. I know it is, it is not such a simple solution to, to the existing system and the problems associated with it. So uh, these are some of my personal feelings. Maybe after the JE, if uh, the student is not forced to take up a department because frankly speaking, he or she doesn't know anything about any department. I didn't know, most of my friends didn't know. Uh, so if they are not forced to take up a department, maybe they choose an institute, uh, then go to the institute, study the courses in the first year, maybe the second year too, uh, at least the first three semesters. I think three semesters is required. I mean, this is, this is just an arbitrary thought that I have. Uh, and then maybe encourage them to uh, take up various kinds of departments. And then maybe, uh, I mean, the advantage could be that uh, just compared to the JE rank, which is just a one day's performance, after that, when the students come here and they perform over the course of two or three semesters, uh, that's a better reflection of, uh, of their potential, their academic potential, their interests, and uh, how much sustained efforts they, they can put in. Based on that, perhaps if uh, even in a competitive way, uh, the departments can be allocated, perhaps it will be somewhat of a better system than what we have currently. So these are just some thoughts I have put out. Uh, I know there are extreme challenges to actually implementing them. Just making a YouTube video is very easy. Uh, just saying these things is very easy, but actually implementing them is really, really difficult. I know the challenges, uh, but maybe some thought can be invested in this direction. Uh, so uh, even as a faculty, I just want to say that uh, for you students, uh, if you are thinking like this, you are not alone. Uh, many of us in the faculty positions also feel this. We have gone through the process. We know some of the disadvantages that are there. But uh, uh, one advice I would say is that you may be listening to this video and then you may be uh, agreeing to it also. Uh, uh, certainly Keshav may be feeling very happy about it. Uh, but please do try to understand. As long as you are part of a system, despite me saying many of these things, uh, it is not going to change overnight, okay? When you are part of a system, make all out effort to make the best of what you have, okay? There's many a time in your life where you have to do the things where, which, uh, which are just there for you, okay? You have to go through that process so that later on you can do some of the things which you really, really want to do, okay? So with this thought, I will wish all of you the very best. See you next time. Bye.